You're the hungover one, so might as well start it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, the one thing I don't miss about not drinking. You Ooh, don't man. drink? I yeah. haven't drank since August. Why? Because of the medication I'm on, okay. mostly. But um, I mean, that's good. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Why? Why? Get the that fuck was, out of here. That was, that was kind of a rude response. No, no, to that. No, no, no. I didn't intend it to come out that way. <laughs> it did, but that's okay. That's our tip. It's, yeah. it's all fine. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Welcome to the Quiet Riot Show, everybody. Um, yeah, I don't know what episode this is. Twenty. This will be like twenty two, twenty three. Something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. In the twenties. It's crazy. I can't believe we're in the twenties. I know. I'm. I'm. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we got a special guest today. It's not just me and Tommy. Thank goodness. Yeah. He's um, across the table. Yeah, he's sitting across the table from us. This is Keith. And I don't. There was some discussion about your last name before we started, and I'm not even going to try. Keith so. the listener. Keith the Keith. listener. Yeah, he's actually one of our listeners, which is yeah. super cool, cool to meet somebody that actually we don't know personally and and listens to our show. And I fucking love that. Yeah, like, it's awesome. Thanks for listening, man. No problem. How did you f- hear about our show? Well, I I've listened to the Dave and Wheeler podcast or Dave Wheeler part Dave, Dave and Wheeler, <laughs> Dave, the Wheeler podcast, and my wife follows your wife. Oh, okay. On uh, Instagram and mm-hmm. all that stuff, so just like kind of word of mouth, we happened to be like see it yeah, yeah, pop yeah. up, and we're just like, oh, let's check it out. Nice man, awesome. Cool. So, awesome. so it's not just not just me that listens to it. My wife listens to it too. Oh wow, that's so, awesome. Yeah. So. Well, thank you. We we talked about it actually. That I think it's super cool to have um, women listen to the show too. And one one person replied to us saying that like it's so good because I can kind of see what my husband's going through because he went through the same shit that w- whatever the topic was yeah. at the time. I'm not sure, but it's 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 actually really awesome to hear that mm-hmm. that women actually get something out of our I like men's. it yeah. I think they should listen sure, to it yeah. like maybe not every episode or whatever yeah. but like I think it's there's some valuable stuff that you can yeah. pick out Absolutely, of it and like, yeah, yeah. as much as we learn about each other and about ourselves like imagine being a woman who doesn't feel the way we feel or go yeah. through those things yeah. like yeah. to get some perspective and some insights mm-hmm. so I love that um, so we're gonna tell you you're gonna tell your story today yeah. you sent us an email and we figured that Instead of reading out that whole email, because there, there was a lot of let, info in there. Let's be honest, it was a novel. Yeah, I, but you know what? That's okay, though. It's the like, longest book I've read in <laughs> five years. And um, yeah, like it was. A, it's a really interesting story, and I'm sure you're not the only one that went through stuff like that. So we're well, here to tell your story. But mm-hmm. before you do that, let's uh, let's check in. <laughs> really, we're starting here. Right? Oh yeah, let's start. It's that reality. obvious, eh? I really want to know how you're doing today. <laughs> oh man, uh, <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> no, uh, I would say aside from the fact I stayed up way too late partying, nice. Uh, I'm a six. <laughs> okay, and uh, so I I kind of asked you during the week, and you said you were a four. Yeah, it's been a and it's been a hell of a week, right? Yeah, this, it's been a hell of a week. Yeah. So, so you're this week's been up. a bit of a roller coaster, but uh, it's all ending better than it started, and so that's yeah. good. That's good. And that's what counts. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I'm 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 around a six seven just because I I don't know. Last weekend, uh, we played our spongy championship, and we ended up winning, and we oh, had nice. some drinks, and I was. Um, Totally fine. Got home, went into the hot tub because my lower back was hurting a little more, and which is normal. And then during the night, I woke up screaming because it's like <laughs> it pinched my sciatic nerve. And uh, it was like 2 a.m. because it was the long weekend. My daughter was still up because I, I see her online. I'm like, what? first of all, what the hell are you doing up this late? <laughs> Second of all, wake mom up and get me uh, get me some creams and pills and whatever because I end up crashing on the on the couch just because mm. I had one too many drinks and yeah, usually nice. just end on the couch. Yeah. But yeah, so and I've been dealing with that pain for the last week, so Oof. it's just been 
fucking brutal. Yeah, yeah. that sucks, so. dude. Um, yeah. What about yourself? How are you? How are you doing today? And you can do whether it's today, this week, this yeah. past month. Well, I would, I would definitely say today is a good day. Today is like a definitely a seven, seven point five. Okay. Nice. Um, last couple of months, I probably put myself around like a six overall. Um, been mm. we we were uh, lucky enough to welcome in a new new person to our family or my little boy Tommy yeah, I'm sure you would like oh, the name shit, yeah. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Thomas Thomas is uh, now in our lives and wrecking havoc on our sleep schedules and yeah oh yeah <laughs> I know how that is <laughs> and and yeah so we've been we've been dealing with that and well, the dealing with it, oh, enjoying yeah, no. it, enjoying it. I mean, no, no you can say dealing with it. You're going to be dealing with, that, with, with him for the next 18 years. Yeah, yeah. He, he literally just turned two months yesterday. Oh, okay. nice. So. Oh, yeah. So a lot, a lot of sleeping. Sleep, so, eat, sleep, eat, poop, right? Yeah, eat, sleep, poop, yeah. repeat. Yeah. 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 So. Is that your first one? Yeah, it's our first one. Okay. Nice. nice. That's awesome. Congratulations, yeah. Thank man. You. Yeah. yeah, congrats. But well, so. let's get into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, like uh, I wrote you guys in um, a couple months ago, I think, yeah. right? It's yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was at that point. I was actually kind of like sort of recovering from another uh, bout of like anxiety and depression mm-hmm. stuff. So um, I've probably dealt with it like my entire life, the anxiety and the depression. Yeah. Um, I just haven't really been able to put a finger on what exactly it was. Actually, even to like the last like year. I would say that we kind of find like I kind of finally figured out what exactly my mm-hmm. uh, my ment- mental health problem or what goes on up there mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, is is really right because um, all throughout high school and stuff like I grew up um, with a, a brother who has a, a physical and mental disability. Okay. Um, so like a lot of the time, uh, like in high school and stuff like that and even middle school I was bullied because you know had a mentally yeah. challenged brother right yeah okay but um never never really knew exactly what was going on and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I just knew sometimes I was down yeah, feeling yeah. feeling like shit right um but it wasn't really until like um I was living on my own and uh you know a lot more alone than than normal that it kind of started to mm-hmm. really start shining its light so about like eight years ago, I want to say, um, I've been working for the same company f- um, in information tech, uh, which is a pretty yeah. stressful job to begin with. Um, with when you get into like the level of that I'm at, okay. Um, because I work on, I don't, I don't just help the uh, the people who call in and say, "Hey, my computer's broken," and I say, "Have you tried turning it off and on again?" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, I got a and story. I fucking hate when people do I, that. I got a story for you. This was Shaw. Like they, they something wasn't working. And they're like, "Well, why don't you try plugging it into a different power outlet?" I'm like, "What? Are you fucking kidding me?" That? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like, you know what? For shits and giggles, I'm gonna try it. And if this works, I'm, I'm that's it. I'm getting rid of all my electronics. Because like I know a little bit about computers, yeah. but like, yeah. fuck. Yeah. That's hilarious. And, Sorry. And, no, that's <laughs> so, all good. Yeah. It's all good. It's, it's funny how many times that actually works is just shutting it down turning it back on yeah yeah, yeah. okay so you're not the guy who's I'm not telling that, people to i'm do not that, that okay. guy <laughs> i'm the it. guy i'm the guy that uh supports like or, or implements all the stuff in the back end okay mm. so like your your programs where you do all your data entry and stuff like that yeah. like that's the stuff that i support yeah. the stuff okay. that i build and the stuff cool. that basically runs the company right yeah, yeah if uh if you don't have a network connection to your computer and you can't do your job then i'm likely the person that gets called at the end of the, okay. end Got of the day mm-hmm. or if a that's... server goes down yeah, yeah, yeah that's me right that doesn't sound not stressful <laughs> it there, it's a lot of firefighting yeah right so like a lot of my day, it's just like if work on like the tasks of building up new stuff or, yep. or fixing small problems during the day, and then at night if, or on weekends if shit breaks, you're the person that has. So to are you like on call? No, all I the haven't. Time, or is I it... haven't. I haven't been in a year for a year and a bit. Okay. Um, because I got a doctor's note. Okay. <laughs> from, yeah, <laughs> from one of my anxiety yeah, yeah. bouts, but well, and with that job, I mean, you know, there's there's jobs where. You don't necessarily you just kind of do things, but like with with your job, people come to you with problem. Yeah, and then you're the one that have to you has you has you have to like 
solve it for them yeah and walk them through and and i mean i just me trying to explain my mom how to copy one file from a folder to another one i got freaking so frustrated you know? <laughs> and so like when yeah people call you probably you know maybe a little bit of basic stuff but yeah. again like it's, yeah. you're always problem solving for others right yeah 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 yeah. so it's it that's kind of actually the fun part of it because a lot of okay. the time you you get um uh, new well in my side anyways you get new problems that you didn't think of before and mm -hmm. and that would come up and then it's like okay how do i solve this right? yeah yeah so um some of it's a lot of fun then some of it just is tedious boring yeah bullshit but mm -hmm. um so yeah i was i was uh recently promoted from from the have you tried turning it off and on again guy to the to the networking yep. side of things that's kind of where i started and um i was really young and eager and i still didn't know how to really say no at yeah. the time Yeah. okay yeah um so whenever i got asked to do overtime whenever i got yeah, phone call at two in the morning or something like that. Like I would, I would answer that call, right? So I was, I was working myself quite a bit, and uh, and basically I got to the to a point where it's like I I built it up in my own head that yeah. I was like um, the only guy that could fix anything there, mm -hmm. right? Um, I started thinking that if a problem came through, no matter how many coworkers I had, it was it was my problem to fix, yeah. right? And it started to, I didn't know it at the time that they, what they were, but it started to lead to like panic attacks. Yeah. Um, oh. like I would, I would hear, um, down the hall even that like this server is not working or this service that literally drives the business mm -hmm. is not working anymore. And I would start to, like put my head down on my desk and start thinking, I was like, Oh shit. Now I have to fix this. Yeah, yeah. And I don't even. And this is not even stuff that I take care of day to day. Yeah, like, like it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but yeah. You, I guess you thought that yeah, this will be your problem to fix. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. Was going so you. so yeah, like I was, uh, I started. I guess that started happening, right? And and uh, normally I'm a pretty smiley, happy, goofing around kind of guy. And mm -hmm. uh, in my parents started noticing like that I wasn't acting normal i was kind of just distant existing kind of just sitting whenever i went would go visit my mom and dad on the week i usually went on the weekends because they have a washing and drying machine my apartment then mm. didn't yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> so perfect, perfect. Yeah. good reason to yeah. go visit yeah. them right <laughs> um so yeah i would uh, go home every sunday and something like that and and yeah i was just kind of like existing i wasn't really you weren't really there no yeah yeah, no, yeah was, like your body was there your mind was somewhere my else, mind yeah. was completely somewhere else and and my parents were, were picking up on it my mom especially was picking up on it mm -hmm. and was uh was asking me was like hey like what's going on i was like oh, i'm fine no i'm fine i'm good I, nothing's yeah, the, wrong the <laughs> predetermined response we yeah. all give to everybody when yeah. it i think i think a lot of and a lot of men tend to just say oh i'm fine yeah. yeah even if they're they are fine but like yeah. it's just an, a normal response so not many people pick up on it that yeah it's like oh, i'm fine or like yeah i'm fine yeah, yeah. right like it yeah. might be a slightly <laughs> different yeah. tone slightly, to it yeah. And, and yeah not everybody picks up on it yeah so um that probably went on for quite a quite a long time i don't I, I couldn't really tell you exactly how long it was going on for um but i do know that like one time we had some overtime work and it was a pretty big project. We thought it was going to take the entire weekend to do, but we ended up completing it in like one day, which was actually quite awesome. Okay. Like it was quite a huge accomplishment for us and, and everyone that was working on it. And uh, so the, the next day we kind of just had a little bit of free time to do some extra work because we had the downtime. And um, I probably worked for a couple hours and looked at my, my coworkers and was like, I just, I need to go. I, something something's not i i just need to get out of here like i was it, we had such a huge win the day before mm -hmm. like um should have been a little bit happier should have been yeah. pretty much yeah. like on cloud nine it was like oh cool yeah. we got like an easy day today right um but i just couldn't do it that day when i went home me and my dad went to the bar playing some vlts playing some or drinking a little bit and i happened to just text my mom and and said i i think today's just a bad day and and the reason why I said that to her is because on the way home, like I was, I wasn't suicidal at this time, but I was, the morbid thoughts and the intrusive thoughts were definitely there. Like I, at that point, I was like, I was like, I kind of want to hit the ditch. Mm, yeah. 
I, I just don't want to yeah. go to work tomorrow. Yeah, been there. Yeah, been so there, yeah. so um, so I want to hit the ditch hard enough for me to stay home, but yeah. not stay <laughs> alive. Yeah, yeah. But stay alive. Yeah. I was like, now, there's still too much to live for, right? Yeah. Now at this at this point, had you like had you brought this up with anybody? No. This is like you're kind of discovering this. Yeah. Yeah. As was, it's happening. As it was happening. Okay. I was kind of like, it's like this, these thoughts are happening and this and that. I was mm-hmm. like just trying to get through it myself, right? Because, mm-hmm. as you know, I, I, I may be only 35, but we still had that mentality that you, you had to be tough. You yeah, had to like, for sure. this is, 100%, you yeah. gotta, you gotta man up. You gotta get through it is going to be whatever. Just suck it up thing. Right. So, um, I texted my mom on that, and then because I was so distant for so long, she's just like, we're going to the lock-in clinic today. Because I, I didn't know this about my mom, but she was, she, she'd gone through some of the same shit, too. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Right? But she didn't, she didn't tell us about it. Yeah. I mean, it's, and, and it's fair for a parent to not really, like, because like, when she was going through it, we were all young. Sure, yeah. Right? So, yeah. you know, you got to, don't want to. And we're like, that's, I mean, our parents, we've talked about our parents before yeah, yeah. and not our yeah. moms as much, but, um, they, if they're, if our generation has a hard time with it, imagine how their generation yeah. feels about talking yeah. about it. Like yeah. that's not a yeah, exactly. way more difficult situation yeah. for yeah. that. So, but, but obviously she knew she had a sense of what to, what she, to look for. Yeah, she like, knew so what to she look could for. pick up on it when yeah. your behaviors and what was going on. Yeah. She knew and probably knew because a you weren't yourself and yeah. she's your mom, but b like she'd obviously been through some of that yeah. and so knew what that looked like. Yeah. So um, so she essentially took me to the the walk-in clinic in where I live uh, that that day, and thankfully enough, like my my family doctor was the one that was doing the walk-in clinic mm-hmm. that day, mm. and so she she took me in there and she she came with me. Because I there was no way I was doing that alone. I wouldn't have been as truthful or whatever. And um, it's, it, at that point, it was just like I broke down. Right? And it was just like I'm thinking about hurting myself. He's, I'm feeling like stressed and he's just so burnt out and this and that. And doctor at the time was like, okay, well, I think you might have some work-related stress and depression, so I want you to take a month off of work Mm -hmm. and take this medication and stuff like that and come back to me next week. And I was like, I can't do a month off. (laughs) I was still still young and and trying to climb the corporate ladder, right? So I was still trying to... You can't show them weakness right now. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, Yeah, right? That was exactly what was... (laughs) That was exactly what was going yeah. through my head, right? Yeah. So it was just like I can't, I can't show that. I was like, two weeks, I'll do two weeks. Yeah. And um, so he's like, all right, wrote two weeks. I went to Mexico <laughs> during that time. Okay, well, that's good. You were, that's what you were supposed <laughs> yeah, to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, my friend was getting married at that time. Okay. Yeah. And I was part of the wedding party, so I was like, well, I can't miss that. Yeah. I spent twenty five hundred bucks on this trip too. So yeah. I'm not getting rid of that. Which is, you know what? It's uh, it's actually um such bullshit when. I hear other other coworkers talk about people that are off on mental health. Like, oh, why is he fishing? Why is he in uh, Mexico? You yeah. know, and I'm like, dude, like he he's stressed out. Like he's doing what he loves doing. <laughs> Shut the fuck well, up. Like, what you do know? you want him to do? Yeah, yeah. Sit. No, you sit in a room and you be quiet. Yeah, right. <laughs> like that's you know, the worse. People, that's people the don't problem. understand <laughs> the, the that mental illness. Is is it, it's not like when you're injured with your, with a broken leg where yeah you're supposed to be at home and yeah, you know, yeah. healing a, a mental illness is basically doing stuff that makes you happy and not makes you think about yeah the bullshit that yeah. made you that way yeah yeah exactly so so I I did the two weeks awesome right and and when I came back um because my work they, my work obviously knew that I was off on stress leave mm-hmm. right. Um, but they didn't necessarily like put too much thought into it. Mm. Um, we had some, some pretty crazy upper management at the time. Uh, Mm. things were changing at the company because six years ago, I want to say the company got sold. Um, we got sold to a company out of Ontario and they're very penny pinching. Yeah. It's always different when a business, especially when when you're there through the transition of ownership and stuff as an employee, like that's a hard, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, 
because especially then too because you don't know if you're going to get so like laid off yeah. or if you know your department's going to go to it sure somewhere and yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 it sure leaves a lot of mystery yeah yeah so um that whole period that that's a little later down the line but um the first that that when i came back that time um they didn't really put me like onto anything else like any sort of like light duties as it were um they kind of just said okay well back to the grind you yeah know, we gotta yeah. we gotta get this done so can you can you do that so i did that f- again for like another couple weeks and then it's just because nothing was changing i just it, it came back so much harder it's mm-hmm. so much more it felt so had you felt, been had you been back to your doctors already at this point yeah a couple okay. times and how was that going like yeah. what what were you and your doctor talking about? Uh, pretty much the same thing that took brought me in there is like I still feel like I want to okay like hit the ditch. Like yeah, I st- I, I'd rather almost have cancer at this point to to not be yeah. yeah in the office. I want I just need time off. Right. Yeah. So he's like, I'm giving you that month, and you're taking it. So I took the month. Yeah. Um, and as much as I hated you know thinking that I didn't need that I was gonna be like looked at so differently yeah from from my coworkers and my manager at the time and and all that i thought like oh shit i'm gonna be stuck here forever now (laughs) right um but it was the first step of like what needed to happen for me um i started finally realizing like okay something i was burnt out you know took the time off and at the during this time Leading up to it, I kind of built myself into a sort of like a social anxiety too, mm. where because I was living on my own, it was like eat, sleep, maybe go to the gym, work, and then go home play video games all night. Yeah, just that cycle. Drink, drink by myself, kind of things, right? Like it was, it was pretty much that. And I wasn't, even though my friends were like five, ten minutes away, I wasn't really seeing them. Right, yeah. I was just talking to them online and hanging out and like voice chats and stuff like yeah. that right um so i was pretty pretty alone and uh my friend who i happened to to work with too at the time just bought a new house and my my apartment was coming up for okay. lease or whatever yeah. so i was just like how about i help you with your mortgage and i move in with you and okay. and and during that that month off i moved in there and we started uh so I like I had someone to at least talk to. That's good. In the yeah, evenings that's... and and kind of just um, play games with in the same room. Yeah, yeah. Right? actually be with somebody. Be with yeah. somebody because cool. that was that was something that I was missing for for yeah. quite some time is like social interaction with like I'm kind of that person where I don't need to talk to you, but I need to see people. Yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Right? I need to be around people. Yeah. know that I'm not the only one there. <laughs> yeah. So did you notice some improvement in your your mindset and your Abs- thoughts of absolutely. doing that? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Like that started that started to to really start help with uh with getting over like at least the depression part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Cuz the depression was pretty heavy. Um it was just sadness and stuff yeah. like that, right? But um so because of that I started doing Twitch. I started streaming okay. on Twitch. And so and you were still taking the medication. St- yeah. Still I'm still taking a medication to this day. Okay. Um but it's a different one now. Yeah. Um uh so I was taking what was called Citalopram or okay. Celexa I think is the brand name of okay. it. Um but it's it's just a, an antidepressant. Yeah. And then uh they also gave me a lorazepam mm. which is to help you kind of get out of the in the moment panic attack it's supposed okay. to yeah, kind of yeah. like lower your heart rate lower your breathing kind of like calm you down sort of stuff cause and that was also you were taking that regularly or, or you're supposed to only take that when you're you're supposed to only take that when you kind of have yeah, an uh, attack yeah. an attack of yeah. some sort and then they also gave me zopaclone which is a sleeping drug yeah. okay. because i wasn't sleeping yeah um, and the first time I took the, I, f- I slept so good. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I've, I've been on sleeping pills. And I remember my wife told me that I walked into the room because you're supposed to take it like 15, 20 minutes or whatever. Yeah, before an hour before, yeah. yeah. And then she, she told me, like, I walked in and, like, I said something. She had no idea what I was saying. Yeah. And... I just like dropped and I was out. <laughs> the first time, the first time I took it, I remember it was like at my parents' house, and I was I remember waking up once and seeing the dog in the room, and all I could muster was 
dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, oh, yeah. The, the only <laughs> reason I stopped taking uh, the sleeping pills because um, it, it screwed up my taste buds. Like, oh, yeah. completely. Oh, like, yeah. Really? Water was so disgusting, man. It was, really? It was the Zop- weirdest thing. Yeah. Zoppelcone makes your mouth taste like metal after. Oh, it's, Ugh. yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't it's, fun. It's bad. It's, it's bad. It's gross. Sounds awful. But I slept like a. Like it was eight, awesome. Eight to ten hours straight, and, no problem. But that one's also like super addictive. Yeah, right. right? So like, I can see why. <laughs> if you if you take it more than two days in a row, you're probably f- like once you stop taking it, you're fucked for two weeks. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. They it's told that... they took they told me that straight up. I was like, oh, do shit. not take this more than two days in a row. <laughs> okay. I was like, okay. Well, that doesn't add anxiety yeah. at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Oh, so. Geez. So there's that. Um, so you moved in with your buddy. Yep. That's going well. Yep. Um, started started streaming on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the reason why I started streaming on Twitch is because I wanted to talk to strangers. Mm. I figured the best way to do it is like, I can still do it in the comfort of my home, but I can read what someone says on the internet mm-hmm. and respond to it. Yeah. And okay. if you don't like it, you don't have to respond. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. And I still get to do what I love to do, which was playing video games. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. At the time, it was a lot of Diablo 3, a lot of Counter-Strike, nice, a lot yeah. of... All those, all those yeah, kind of games. And we had a chat before before you showed up, and that's like, yeah, I missed video games so <laughs> much. Man. Yeah, I haven't really been able to play in two yeah. months. Yeah, well, like, we'll find out why shortly. I think. Oh yeah. Um, um, okay, so th- how was the t- Twitch streaming? Was that like, did that become a bit of a therapeutic thing for it you? Sure, it sure did. Um, because with that, I also started. Um, a local Winnipeg community. Okay. So I created a server. It's Discord. Yeah. Um, yeah. Started a Discord server, and the people who were kind of running it at that time is like, hey, I got this up and running. And then I kind of just was the moderator slash yeah. administrator for that stuff. And uh, we grew it quite Which fast. It can be a lot of work, too. It, it yeah. is. It absolutely is. Yeah. Um, so talking about, like, like, I had... A, a thing where it was just like, okay, this this doesn't bother me anymore. I'm gonna add this extra thing on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh-huh. I um I helped d- build that community, and because I wasn't necessarily running, like we got to the point where like Twitch themselves like sponsored oh, nice. our oh. meet, our meetups and stuff Sweet. like that. And so they would give give us free stuff to like hand out to the no, cool. the people who come out. And we we went from the first meetup of being like eight people who went bowling to a hundred plus people filling out almost all of the back of underdogs. Oh nice. wow, that's awesome! Like consistently, right? Nice. Hmm. So um, eventually, the people who were running it had to leave. They they took a job out in BC, so they left. Mm-hmm. So they're like, hey, do you want to take it over? So I took it over, and I did that for about a year and a half. Okay. Ran, ran wow. about three or four events, and every single time is like it was great. Up to it, I I was pretty good at delegating who can do what and yeah. stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And then, but I would always end up putting the most of the burden on myself, right? Which we covered earlier that yeah. you tend to take ownership <laughs> to, of things you to, don't need to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um, and uh, yeah, so we, uh, we, three or four events doing that, and then I was just like, I have to, to give that up as mm-hmm. well, which yeah. was fine. I'm still part of that community a little bit um i just i kind of sit back in the bleachers and see what how's it going the moderating is a lot of work it yeah, sure is yeah. uh there is a lot of drama especially in its early yeah. ages like uh well you want to create this i know you love this safe space <laughs> <laughs> but you know where people Fucking can come and 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 talk, <laughs> and talk about the whatever the, the group is all about right <laughs> without yeah. like being you know judged or yeah, the whole bashed well, or whatever. Yeah, the the whole point of why people join those communities, especially if you're a content creator, is to network. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. You want to you want to see who who can help you grow. Yeah, your own yeah shit. Right. Yeah. So there comes a level of like, yeah, I'm gonna be nice to you, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. also gonna be a dick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So <laughs> so I started seeing that, and that's kind of why I don't stream too much anymore is it just kind of lost the fun of it it felt too much like a real job and i wasn't getting i was getting like a hundred bucks a month oh yeah that's that's not worth it no (laughs) yeah um so or even every three months like it was it was bad it it was enough to pay for a video game every once in a while yeah 
but, but it not, wasn't not enough to really want to. Well, keep and not there. worth the stress that came with it and no. whatever else that you no. were going through. So well, and like talking about Twitch, man. Like I've uh, I I don't really watch any uh, Twitch streams, but I've seen like clips, right? Yeah. And or people do like the dual one where they they're on Twitch as well and and TikTok yeah. and yeah. they have it or on YouTube, right? They have it set up like on two three accounts, and. Now there's this really good looking girl wearing like a skimpy outfit. Her v- video game ability, like I don't know, I'm not a pro gamer, but like it was <laughs> like she was just running around like basically in circles what it looked like. And like how hard did she have to work for those 5000 viewers? Not as hard as a as, guy would. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> like I mean that's like how unfair is that? Like yeah. <laughs> you, if you're a guy, like you really have to be good or interesting or do something yeah. to stand out, right? Yeah. And again, I'm not trying to bash women, <laughs> but they have it so much easier on Twitch, TikTok, or whatever to get followers and actually generate some money. Mm. So, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, there's, there's my do two minute can, rant. Yeah, do, yeah. <laughs> Should we do an episode about this? Or? Maybe. <laughs> but uh, so, like, throughout the whole time of streaming on Twitch, doing the the moderation and all that stuff, is like yeah. I was kind of like weaning on and off of these that that antidepressant mm. because I was feeling good, right? Like yep. I was I was feeling better. I was feeling more myself. I feel like I didn't. I haven't had to take any of the the, the anxiety attack medication for a while, so it was like. I don't need to be on this really anymore. And every time I kind of started weaning off of it or going off of it, like something would happen. Yeah. And I'd start feeling like shit again. Yeah. It was like, all right, I guess I got to go back on. Well, and that's the thing is like when the medicate and I've, I've dealt with, I've heard this from a lot of people. Like when the medication's working, you feel like you don't need it because yeah. you feel like how you're yeah. wanting to feel. Yeah. And then it's this weird thing where, yeah. yeah. So, so like I would, I would wean off of it and then I'd be off of it for like two weeks and then suddenly I'm just randomly crying. Mm. No reason mm. whatsoever. It's yeah. Like, all right. So I'll go back, talk to the doctors and I'm like, I don't know why I'm feeling like this again. It's like, well, here's your script. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right. Okay. So, uh, and then, so like up to this point, like I still haven't seen a counselor. Okay. Talked, yeah. talk, talk to a therapist or anything like okay. that. Like, yeah. I tried once when it first happened, and I felt so dismissed by the person. Like, yeah. it just wasn't a good good matchup. Yeah, right? and, and that happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I was really burnt by it that time. So I was like, oh, I guess I'm doing this on my own kind of thing, yeah. right? So for for from that point, like, to about, um, I want to say just after the pandemic the pandemic definitely didn't help me mm. <laughs> i would assume i don't think it did anybody, <laughs> anybody yeah. yeah um but uh like up to that point like it was kind of on and off again i didn't need to take any time off work for for stress or anxieties okay. or anything like that okay. but it was definitely like i was definitely more open with my my manager at the time and just saying hey i'm feeling like shit today he's like i'm gonna do my best but like just feel like crap yeah kind of like just more more open about it at that point to at least mm-hmm. my co-workers and my 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 boss at the time yeah. to to like at least like keep the conversation going about my anxieties and stuff like that yeah, that's and good so, um they took me off of a lot of the stuff that i was working on that was like high stress that was overwhelming you that was and, definitely yeah. overwhelming yeah, me that's and, good that's a supportive uh, like that's a good thing yeah and then and and focused me more into a, a specific field so like um, at that point I was networking and, and they were also like, you're also doing backups, you're doing cell phones, you're doing the phone system, you're doing this. Like, yeah. so they started stripping some of those things away. Like I didn't take care of the backups anymore. I didn't care, care about the phones anymore. I just, it was purely, yeah. and then they're like, okay, well let's try adding storage and virtualization, which is what I do now, which is I take, I take one server and I make it 20. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, it's basically these really beefy servers, and I just carve up the resources and say, hey, it's this many servers. Now. Okay. That's your thing now? That's my thing okay. now. So now we have a server guy. If any, yeah, you ever need to go. set up Anyone? a server here, then, you know, like we know who to call. <laughs> yeah. So how did, so at, when they were, when they were stripping jobs, tasks away from you, how did that, did that feel good or did that feel shitty or did it feel some, both? Some, if it was both. Okay. Um, 
I should mention too, like this the uh, after that first one month that I came back, they didn't put me back into my role right away. They put me back on help desk. Okay. So I was again after four years of trying of getting out of that. Have you tried turning off and on again? Yeah. I was no. Have you tried turning off and on again? Oh, fuck. Mm. Yeah, um, that sucks. And and it didn't sit well with me at all. Yeah. Um, it felt like I got demoted. It felt like. I was like, oh shit! Like, well, I can do more than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and they kept me there for a long time. Mm. Um, and and I think at that point it was like they were trying to help me, but at the same time, it's like this isn't helping me. This mm-hmm. is just yeah. making me feel like, like it gave me in a sense of the, like the imposter syndrome. Mm. I would mm-hmm. want to say, like in a way, is like it's like I was working on this stuff before, but clearly I wasn't good enough for it. Yeah. Right. So, so that kind of fueled the depression a little bit too. Um, and it definitely made me feel like I couldn't go anywhere. Like I couldn't go to another job because mm. I was like, I felt like, yeah. um, I was like, well, clearly I you're not valuable. I'm you, not valuable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I eventually worked my way back up and, and clearly that isn't the case anymore. Yeah. Um, and then 2022 is when, when shit really started happening again. Um, I was, it was the tail end of that code red that we were all in where we're like, we couldn't go for Christmas. We couldn't yeah, go to New Year's. Couldn't do anything. Whatever literally, that, literally yeah. couldn't step foot out yeah, of your door yeah. unless yeah. you were going to get a piece of bread or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so we were, we were all isolated and stuff like yeah. that. And, and like I was doing okay and I was weaning off of my meds again. Like at this, this time I was like, I'm not going off them throughout the pandemic. Yeah. Right. It was like, this isn't, that's just the worst time to do it. And, um, good for you to, uh, know enough about yourself to know that. Yeah. yeah that's Cause awesome. I was like, it, like if, if we're stuck inside the whole yeah. time, I'm just going to drive myself crazy. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And, and that's just going to cycle, cycle things, and right? get worse. Yeah. So the code red had ended, right. I was weaning and I was taking my time going off of the meds this time. Like each step that they told me, like do this for two weeks, then do this for two weeks. I was doing it for a month. I was like, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm taking yeah. it extra slow on this one. And near the end of getting off of them completely, I started noticing like my thoughts, those thoughts were starting to come back. Right. Like the, the intrusive mm-hmm. thoughts, the, yeah, yeah. The, like I'd rather not be doing this right now. Yeah. Um, having dreams about stuff breaking at work that had no history of breaking. Like it's been running solid for eight years and it's yeah. not broke once. It has yeah. not rebooted once when you didn't want it <laughs> <Yeah>. to. <laughs> and, and it was like, this is going to break. I just like, and it felt like nobody was listening me, to me. And, and, and I started building that, that circle of thought where it's just like, this is going to break. No one's listening to me. It's going to break tonight no one's listening to me so on and so on and so yeah. forth right and it just it, it got into that vicious circle where it's just like you're beating yourself up and yeah and and it got to the point where i was worrying myself literally sick mm. i was getting yeah. i was getting sick in the bathroom because i was worrying about stuff that didn't need to be worried about yeah. and so like this was happening over a long weekend and um i was having i what i now know is is a bit of a panic attack and i was just chilling in in my bedroom with my my wife was in the other room at this point um and, or no we were we weren't married yet yeah we were getting married that year okay so, okay so let me back up a little bit <laughs> got ahead of myself um so i was having that stuff happen right we have just moved into our new house uh in in stonewall okay uh it was a brand new build so um we weren't even there in there a year but i knew that year we had to get the landscaping done yeah. otherwise i lose that deposit yeah that they they love oh, to take okay. from you right like, yeah, yeah. it's like oh we need the extra money here just to make sure that you do it and then when you when you're done we'll we'll give it back to <laughs> yeah. you yeah gross which it's that feels fucking that, criminal, doesn't it it? It, it, it? it is. They they don't like my tree, so they took five hundred bucks off because <laughs> oh, they don't like you your serious? tree. Yeah, they're like it's not thick enough. Well, why did like... you put in such a shitty tree? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I know, right? Like, it's wow. not gonna it's not yeah. gonna survive the winter. Well, guess what? It survived the fucking winter. <laughs> the you should go back. Like, hey, I need that money back. <laughs> Give me my five hundred bucks. <laughs> it survived. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but we had we and we were also getting married that year. Yeah. Okay, right. So, so it was like the thought of the expenses 
stresses coming up that yeah. year was just, just extra stress insane yeah. yeah and it's not a fault of my parents at all um the the situation that we grew up in right with my older brother having a mental uh, yeah. disability yeah. and and physical disabilities my mother had to stay home mm. right so she was a stay at home mom and my dad had to work his butt off to put yeah. food on the table yeah. keep the house over over uh, the roof over our heads and stuff like that so it was like that that like unintentional teaching of like the man has to make the money in yeah. the family yeah, yeah. Um, and, it, and it was never really the case right like my dad never said like you have to do that yeah, yeah. right he never no but it was the it was what you grew up with it was the impre- yeah. like just an, an unfortunate result of the, the what the situation yeah, we're yeah. in um, and we never had a bad life mm-hmm. it was always it was always a pretty good good life right yeah um, can't complain about it at all um so in my mind i was paying for all of that yet my wife was able to easily contribute to yeah. it as well right <laughs> again sure, you're yeah. stressing about something that's not actually happening yeah yeah, yeah. so um i it, with 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 the thoughts of what was going on or what i was worrying about with at work worrying about the sod worrying about the w- cost of the wedding I started getting really into a mm, yeah. dark hole, mm-hmm. right? And um, I was watching a Twitch stream, and it just happened to be, to be like a, a gunfighting game. And and I was in the middle of an anxiety attack or some sort of episode, and I heard a gunshot on for, come from the TV, and this sense of euphoria and relief that came over my body was the scariest thing Ooh. that have ever hit, yeah. happened yeah. to me ever and i and and i couldn't i i felt i couldn't talk to anybody about that at that yeah. mm. at that that second mm. right so i just like i called for my fiance at the time or my wife and um she i just sat with her i just like i have to be near you right now yeah, yeah. yeah. and then the next day um my parents came over because i was still like in rough shape and stuff yeah. like that and they they're like what's going on i was like i heard a gunshot last night from the tv and i felt good yeah, that's <laughs> and that's fucking scary. scary. It's concerning. It, it was yeah. pretty, yeah. pretty scary. Like, and and I would never do anything like that, right? Yeah. Like that, that shit. Like it, it doesn't really want to. I don't want to do that, right? No, but you can. But something in you feels something about it, yeah. Right, and yeah. so you have to face that, which yeah. is great that you actually faced it right mm-hmm. away and like yeah. talked to so, your or sat with your fiance or your wife and yeah. So they. They took me to the ER that day. Okay. Yeah. Um, because it, that's suicidal ideation. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's not. It's not you being suicidal. It's like the idea of this felt good, right? Yeah. What they do when you kind of have that situation in in an ER, especially in where I was, is they put you in a what's called a quiet room, and they just let you sit there. And my mother was there. My fiance was there. We were pretty much just there by ourselves, getting checked in every maybe two, three hours from a nurse, and and it was just like you, the goal here is for you to calm down and kind of like not like just feel like you're safe, right? Like mm-hmm. you're safe here. And then they wheel in a TV and they call the crisis unit of Manitoba, and then you have a conversation one on one with a couple of people, social workers, okay, from mm-hmm. there. Cool. So that is what happened. And that, at that point, they're like, well, you're not suicidal. Uh, you just had some really intrusive thoughts. They recommended me to go through this course through the uh, Anxiety Disorder Associations of Manitoba. Okay. Um, and what it was was like a six to eight week course. And, and what it was is just highlighting each, each week you did a different thing which was like um this week is like uh cyclical thoughts and it's like next week was like this is what your brain does with that and then so on and so forth so it it finally started teaching me like hey this is anxiety Mm. this isn't this is this isn't something that you are doing maybe maybe you are doing it to yourself in a way but um there's a reason behind it yeah sort of thing so i started finally learning about what was going on and at this point i was on on that medication again but they also gave me a a 
uh, one to take every day for the, the it was called clonazepam to oh, control yeah. the anxiety. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was to like, you take that in the morning, in the evening, and then this will help control your anxiety and, and stuff like that. So, so, and, and the reason why you want to do that too is because, well, what they wanted me to do that is to just write the ship. Yeah. Right. Mm. Right now, we need you to not be thinking about your anxieties and your depressions and stuff like that. Yeah. We want you to focus on you and start working towards um, writing that ship. Right. Yeah. Get, get your thinking back properly. Hey, Tommy, among all the episodes we've recorded, you know, there's one common theme, and that's getting therapy. We've talked about it lots. Many, many times. You yep, had a yep. really tough time making that first phone call. I had a tough time making that first phone call. I didn't even know if the person I was going to see was the right person, but you got to just try. Thank goodness we have a sponsor that makes it way easier now. BetterHelp has an online platform that allows you to fill out a questionnaire, they connect you with a therapist, and you get to communicate with them however you want. So whether that's text messaging... That's emails, that's through their app, that's video chats. You get all those options, and it makes it way less scary to be connected with someone. And if you're not into the person you talk to, they'll sign you another one right away. Um, I've gotten assigned mine already, and yeah, I can't wait to here. use it. Like By the time you hear this, I will have had my first session, and I'm super pumped to talk about it on the show. Yeah, I'm very excited about it, and like it's very easy to sign up. It took us maybe five minutes to sign up. And um, you answer just simple questions, and uh, next thing you know, uh, you got a message that the ther- you will be paired up with a therapist. And within the same day, we got the therapist already, and the name, and a message from them, and we were able to communicate with them. So it's extremely easy. So please go to betterhelp.com. Oh, that the yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Betterhelp.com. <laughs> Slash Quiet Riot Show, and you get to also uh, enjoy ten percent off for your first month if you sign up uh, using this link. So again, right here, I'm gonna be doing it from here. Yeah, it's better help. <laughs> Am I screwing it up? Dot com <laughs> slash Quiet Riot Show. Um, yeah, sign up today, and uh, you'll you're not gonna regret it because I'm already enjoying it. Uh, just the fact that we connected with therapist. Me too, man. Thank you to BetterHelp for supporting this podcast. Okay, so you, so where are we at here? Let's just. I was uh, just talking about how I was uh, on the Adam program. Yeah. Yes. The, oh yeah, you're uh, the eight week thing. The eight week thing. So, so I was doing that, and that that kind of like, so like finally learning about like what anxiety was and 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 all that stuff, like really shone a light to like a lot of the history mm. I had with with my my journey that I've been been on mm. with my mental started health started to make sense it made so much more sense <laughs> yeah that must yeah. have felt good <laughs> it did it did um and uh so like if and it's a free resource too actually so like there I there's think, actually a lot of free resources for uh, yeah for mental health and even men's uh like I, I went through the men's clinic for my uh, therapy sessions and stuff so there's lots of free stuff out yeah there. yeah but and so like i went through that i still wasn't seeing a counselor at this time i was still able to kind of deal with it on my own yeah um but again that I, again opened the dialogue up even more at least with my friends and family that hey like i have anxiety issues mm-hmm. and shit like this no are you working at the at the time uh that time i i got another stress leave for okay a, for a month okay right like it, it yeah. got it got because of the the trip to the the ER and, yeah. the, and the involvement of the crisis unit, yeah, um, which they're in and out quick. Crisis okay. unit will will make sure that you're okay and that you're not going to be a harm to yourself. Yeah, or anything they're like there that. to make that's their job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then they're kind of like, okay, we have to hand you off to yeah. to the other resources now. Yeah. So, um, which is absolutely fine. Um, and then so. So yeah, I was off for another month. Um, spent that month like starting to to finally like take walks again around the yeah. the area, and and um, this was in the middle of winter too. So f- that fucking cold winter where we got like twenty <laughs> feet of snow. <laughs> Oof, yeah. yeah. So, and I, I, I love that. I had. I, I hate I, that you love that. <laughs> I love the winters. Yeah, it's it's just I don't know. 
I Do hate you, shoveling the snow. I was going to ask, but you I, like like shoveling no, the snow? No, no. I mean, I, I have a snowblower, but like still, like it's... It, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I, I remember because we, we had literally no room where didn't know yeah. where to put all that yeah. snow. Yeah, that's... that. that I, year, I have a pretty big front yard. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, like that year was freaking crazy yeah. we had so much snow yeah i was like shoveling every day yeah. so i was getting lots of exercise <laughs> i mean that's the good part yeah my my back thing's different <laughs> <laughs> so uh i did that and then went back to work everything was fine i wasn't weaning off of any of the meds this time except uh, for the clonazepam because you don't want to be on that forever that, okay that shit fucks with your mind yeah. okay <laughs> that's the one with for the panic attacks right that yeah the, the yeah brings it down yeah yeah so so that stuff will actually like alter yeah. uh, i'm i've learned this recently that it will kind of like alter your, your permanently thing, permanently yeah right? oh okay some of them do some of them don't yeah. yeah um so anyways i by the wedding i was off of that i was able to enjoy the the open bar that we had sweet <laughs> nice there we go i'm yeah. a little disappointed in my friends they didn't drink drink me dry uh, they, uh, they didn't should have invited us yeah they we should have <laughs> <laughs> i think i drank festival like, the voyager dry yeah, last night <laughs> <laughs> the bill the bill wasn't didn't even cross like two grand i was like what the hell oh wow it was like, yeah, my, it was like in my family it was just like come on guys <laughs> <laughs> You can't tell that I drank more than you. Yeah, <laughs> come on. So, so that that we got married. Front yard was all done. Everything was good. Right? Awesome. Yeah. And then so everything really worked out the way it was supposed yeah. to without any hiccups. Yeah. yeah. So, so, um, so and so what? Which what year did you guys get married? That was before the pandemic or after? After the pandemic. So we got yeah. engaged. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got engaged during it, and then we yeah. were just like, let's. At least look at venues, and then we'll we'll like we purposely picked 2022 to get married, okay? Because we figured by that point, shit will be back to normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and by July, everything was pretty much nice. back to yeah, normal yeah, at that perfect. point. Perfect. So yeah. like, it was the hottest day ever. <laughs> it was like plus. I mean, better than raining. No, it was yeah. plus. It was plus 34. Oh, God. <laughs> Humid yeah. as shit. And it's great when you're wearing well, a suit <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i purposely told the guys it's like we're not wearing suits that day we were just wearing nice yeah. freaking shirts yeah i'm yeah. gonna wear a vest because yeah, so, to differentiate myself yeah, yeah, from yeah. you guys <laughs> yeah. and then yeah, just just so your bride doesn't get confused with <laughs> <that> right? <laughs> yeah. and and um we did it all at the glendale golf and country oh, Club. oh nice that's a nice, nice. Place, yeah. they have everything there food was amazing mm-hmm. yeah i great. used to i used to be a member there for a oh, bunch yeah? of years yeah nice yeah mm-hmm. and and so yeah, it was great. It's like no nice. one, ha- no one had to, no one had to freaking travel anywhere. Yeah, to, to like between the ceremony and the yeah. reception. So it was just like everything's there. So yeah, awesome. yeah. And I had a great time. Tornado touched down about twenty minutes from where my house is th- that day. It okay, was, yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's a little, that's a typical hot day. And yeah, windy, that's and, a little bit yeah. stressful. But Mid- middle of dinner, and everyone's phone was getting those alerts. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a memorable day. Yeah. <laughs> so it was all good, and then. So for like the rest of the year, everything was pretty much great, right? Like mm-hmm. nothing was going awesome. Going and so yeah, like at this point, it's basically, it, 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 I guess a lot of people are scared of um, uh, medication because I know a lot of like when I went through that stuff, my doctor prescribed me, and I had multiple friends yeah. tell me, "Don't take the meds, just just take the time off." And I'm like, "Well, doctors, I, I and, and I do trust doctors, and I don't. Yeah, but they wouldn't prescribe you something that would." fuck you up you know like because sometimes yeah. you just need that it's it's a chemical imbalance right yeah and then my serotonin levels were off yeah mm-hmm. and so like you're now on this medication that kind of leveled you out and things yeah. are happening the good things are happening in your life right yeah, yeah. so so how was work at that during during that time uh after after the uh like well, when you guys got married when you you were work was good yeah yeah like, it was really good um we we finally got rid of the the guy that liked to micromanage and okay. point fingers at literally anyone mm-hmm. but himself. Yeah, yeah. Um, they kind of found out that he was running a business on the side during oh, work sweet. hours. That's good. Yeah, that's everybody <laughs> likes that. Okay, so, so work's good, marriage is good. Yep. At this stage, house is good. House is good. Everything's good. That's awesome. Yep. That's a, that, did it feel like a good win, or it, were you it, like it felt it felt really good. Like your mental state was. Uh, yeah clear enough that you were able to enjoy those wins and, and yeah. feel good about that yeah, yeah. that's amazing so man. like congratulations so go, yeah, on all so, of that. so going up like 
there's just a little bit more. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, no. I'm not saying we're done. I'm no, saying, no, no, I'm no. Saying we hit a point now where like there's you were in a stage of like a lot of wins and everything yeah. was going. Yeah, right. yeah. That and that that stage, uh, unfortunately, was short lived. But it, but, but it happened. Yeah, yeah. But it was great. It was yeah. great. I was I was finally like we we kind of mentioned that before that you have we have to celebrate the the little wins. Yeah. Because yeah. if we don't, well, exactly. You know. Yeah. Then, Yeah. All that work is for nothing. Right? And then, so, so yeah, we were, we were, I was really good up until about like December of last, or, de de uh, sorry, about mm, May, around there. Okay. Uh, of, of last year. Okay. So I was really good up until that point. Um, in December, I told my, like my wife and I have always wanted to have a kid. Mm -hmm. Wanted to have kids maybe. Yeah. Um, uh, And at that point, I was like, okay, shit's going good in life. You know, I'm feeling really good about myself. I was like, let's start trying. So a couple of months go by, and uh, around Easter of last year, my wife and I found out that we were expecting our first. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I, it would have been great if she didn't tell me at like six in the fucking morning. <laughs> <laughs> just just after I woke up and got out of the bathroom. Like, <laughs> she comes up to me and says, like, Happy Easter, Daddy. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? And it's like, wait, hold on. Seriously? What? Yeah. <laughs> We're expecting? Yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> so, you know, I was I was really excited about that for about a week. <laughs> okay. And then that, that same thought process of like, okay, now I gotta pay for this. Oh, I just yeah. kicked back in. Back, shit, yeah, back to the, all that practice that I I, I yeah. worked on yeah. last year. Just it seemed to like slide away mm. and completely disappear. Mm -hmm. And I was starting to get back into that that cyclical thought yeah. again. Right. Um. The thing about this time is that I quickly recognized it. Yeah. I was like, something's not right here. Um, I'm kind of going back into my my cycle or whatever. Yeah. Went to the doctor, got my, got, got talking to them again, making sure that they knew what was yeah. going on. They got me on the clonazepam again, was like, just right the ship mm -hmm. kind of thing. And, um, yeah, so I, I was back on the, on that stuff again for a little while. And everything again was like finally starting to be good again. I was, I, I was starting to remember like some of the things that I taught myself before and was getting through it until about, August of last year as well, when it really started to feel real, like she's starting to show and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh shit, this is really happening. Yeah, I mean, this yeah. is <laughs> really fucking happening, yeah. and we're trying to figure out. And we're start talking about the mat leave and all that stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh, are you going to take Pat leave? And this is like, yeah, start talking about that, and then you yeah. start to learn shit that you didn't know existed. That, that like when they go on mat leave, it's fifty five percent of their wage. Yeah. And you're like, oh fuck, it's. Not as exciting. <laughs> That's not as exciting. That first year is going to be shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Kids going to cost so much fucking more money. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Right? I um, mean, when, when uh, just a quick story. When uh, we found out that uh, we were pregnant with our first one, we're like, yay, that's awesome. And then I got a letter from my work that, oh, you're getting laid off. I'm like, shit. Oh. <laughs> so I got laid off at the end of January. My daughter was born in uh, in August. Yeah. So I was on EI. But at the end of the day, I looked at it, I'm like, well, I'm getting EI. It's only, it's, it's like, I was making at the time like uh, 20 bucks an hour. So on EI, sitting on my ass, I was getting 15 bucks an hour. <laughs> And... The best thing is I was still gaming at the time, <laughs> and she was a fussy girl at night. So like I would like you know what I'll stay up with her all night. Like yeah. I'll feed her, I'll change her. My yeah. wife just had to like she wasn't she couldn't uh, feed her, but she was able to pump breast milk. So That, so I'm like you just do the pumping. I'll feed her, change her, and everything. So I was at the computer. She was in the bassinet right beside yeah. me sleeping. <laughs> I'm like okay guys, kids up. Sorry, and then that, I was back at it. So it was the best. I, I was super worried how it's gonna work, but then it yeah. worked out really awesome <laughs> yeah so so we were discussing about that and stuff like that right like, like that started to, mm -hmm. to hit me and, yeah. and, and and then that was just and i kept on forgetting that there's other things too like child care benefit yeah yeah. And yeah. Shit. yeah yeah all that all that time that i started freaking out about this shit again i was like forgetting 
all of the like extra stuff yeah. that come. and then she finds out that it's like oh yeah the government gives me a top up program too from EI and it's just like oh so it's like 93% yeah oh, we're yeah. Fine. yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <We're> yeah. <laughs> and she just got a new job too it was like it, it was so funny how this dra- dragged out right <laughs> she applied for a job in June didn't get inter- or tested until October didn't get interviewed until November got the job in December Went on mat leave a week later. <laughs> <Jeez>. Nice. <laughs> Good God. So, so um, yeah, about August, uh, I went, I got to the point where it was like suicidal ideation again. Yeah. Yep. So I went back to the, the ER and uh, there was no call to the crisis unit this time. Okay. But I will have to give the nurse their credit that day. She helped me so freaking much because- she took the time to like listen and even showed me some of her own scars mm. of when she was younger. Okay. Which, like, yeah. ugh, that fucking just made the tears go. Sure, um, yeah. But the doctor at that time, like, I was still on the clonazepam, right? And the clonazepam is that heavy hearing one. Yeah. And so they, 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 like, my heart was going like 20 miles a minute. It felt like I was like, like, the, the, a panic attack sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it like it feels like your mind is racing constantly. Your breathing shortens, yeah. so like it feels like you're out of breath. Your heart rate is so fast, and you just feel paralyzed. Kind of, yeah. It's like I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anyone to kind of go through that. It's it sucks. Um, so because like I'm, I was feeling a panic attack in the in the in that quiet room. The doctor literally pulled out an M, like the ultrasound machine and showed my heart yeah to show that i wasn't in in any sort of like heart attack state mm, or yeah. anything like that um but though the one thing that's just kind of unfortunate is this is he switched that clonazepam med to the lorazepam which is the like take as needed yeah. kind of thing you don't i've i found out that you don't really do that because because of how it affects your mind okay and and i found out that with with uh, and I found that out, this out like two weeks later because I ended up back at the ER again two weeks later, but this time I had plans. Mm. Um, and and it, it really sucked because I was trying to, like, I wasn't getting any sleep. Yeah. It was, and, and, and I was just, I was off work at this time. So it's not like I had to wake up for work. Yeah. Um, I, like, when, when the plan started, I just went back to work. Like I had my two weeks off, or whatever time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they only gave me two weeks that time. Um, I just got back to work. I was there for three days. During the day, I thought about jumping in front of a semi truck because where I work, there's a bunch of semis. Yeah. Um, and then, um, at night, I just wanted to sleep so bad. I thought about taking the keys into the garage and running the car. Mm. And. Yeah. Um, I didn't wake my wife up or anything at that point, um, because I didn't want, she was sound asleep. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, I'm just going to ride this out until the morning and then we're going to take care of it. And in the morning we went back to the ER. Okay. Mm-hmm. And when I found, and then crisis unit got involved in that one, that was the first time I've ever stayed overnight in a hospital. Okay. Uh, they kept me there all day. Like, and, and what really sucked about those two weeks too is like my my appetite disappeared like the anxiety was coming and going but the depression was just so bad and 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 all that um well in combination of not getting any sleep and yeah. everything yeah, just like your body mind is exhausted yeah, yeah. i was just just it was just such a yeah. it was it was it was the darkest i've a hole i've ever been mm-hmm. in right um and i i just i know i have to give myself credit for this is that I had the strength to tell someone a hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like I, had sure. the, I had the strength and the willpower to, to not act on any of those plans, even though they were so fucking real. Yeah. Um, and, um, I had the strength to tell someone we went to the ER and they were doing their shift change mm-hmm. and stuff. Right. And they're like, what's going on? I was like, I'm suicidal. Yeah. And, um, so again, back in the quiet room, you know, my mom shows up, wife shows up. We just sit there all day, and about eight o'clock, like we're, the crisis unit finally got involved. 
you said because of what you've said with the plans and stuff like that we're gonna admit you for the night get yeah. you some sleep yeah for sure and so i stayed the night they released me the next day said you're off for however long yeah. which was like a month again okay. um and this so i was off again all of like september last last year mm-hmm. and um and that's when I really started to learn about my anxiety. Um, it's like, okay, we know this is anxiety. Like, the if if last year was any indication, like this is, anxi- I need to work on this. Mm, yeah. So, I finally uh, called the crisis unit, and they suggested, like, do you have employee assistance program? I was like, yeah, and they're like fucking call someone <laughs> yeah 100 <laughs> percent. so i finally i finally told them I was like okay like put me in touch with a counselor mm-hmm. so i finally got in touch with a counselor and right away like within the first 20 minutes of talking to her she's like you don't like change <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like what gave it away <laughs> <laughs> no kidding yeah that's amazing. So, yeah. so you're seeing a therapist now? Um, actually, we kind of just put a pause on it, okay, because of just how good I'm doing right now. Yeah. No, I mean, like, but, like when you like, so you, you got you contacted EAP, and now you had your first session, and then you continued for yeah. A few so, sessions, like, right? so like in September, I uh, yeah. late August, I started finally seeing a counselor, and I was going like every two weeks. Nice, finally, yeah, yeah, yeah. finally, cool. finally. Awesome. Like, I have twelve sessions a year, so it was like, yeah, I have perfect. Lots, I have lots. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah no, great. it's amazing, and, good. and I know a lot of people to get turned out, turned off that they have to pay because having counselors can be know, expensive. Very expensive yeah. if you don't have coverage, right? Yeah. And even if you have coverage, it still is pricey because no, most people is. don't have hundred percent coverage. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, I I know, like, uh, through my work, we have EAP as well. And I think I believe for our marriage counseling, we got eight free sessions. Yeah. And, you know, we used it up, and that was great. That's all we needed. Yeah. If we needed more then yeah. fine but like a lot of people are scared to make that first step mm. and, yeah and, and i know and i was there i was took definitely me three months to yeah. make that phone call so took me eight years <laughs> yeah yeah right exactly yeah. so it, it it just takes takes us a long time but like just anybody listening to the show i just really hope that if you're feeling shitty just call someone yeah, yeah. just make yeah. the phone call yeah make, make that, that phone yeah. call to your friend yeah. to your doctor to yeah. the er or anywhere yeah, exactly yeah. yeah so um going to the counseling really helped mm-hmm it finally started like like i i i really started to learn like i was i was judging myself more than i would judge anyone else mm, yeah. i was holding myself to such a high standard that like um that i just wasn't even grateful for the things that i had right like yeah. i on my street like we're in a new suburb yep. suburb of stonewall uh, <laughs> stonewall is not really that big um yeah. but it's an, it's a new development area right yeah. but you look down the street you see like RVs and people's driveways, yeah. big yeah. boats and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. big and fancy cars and their house is bigger than yours or something like that. And yeah. you're just like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, you kind of wish that that was your, your driveway yeah. instead. Right. But yeah. then, and one thing that my wife even says, like, you don't see their bills. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, it could be worse off than you think. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and so, um, like going to the counselor, and kind of stumbling across, like, I, I, I did do a lot more reading again, like, learning about, yeah. I read this one book called Untangling Your Anxiety okay. by Joshua Fletcher and Dean Stott, and it, it, it really, like, again, connected even more dots to how I was feeling, what I was doing, and what kind of led to, like, these anxiety-driven, like, circles. Okay. Um, so that that book really helped me put that together seeing other people uh that had like i went to the clinic like clinic yep. in winnipeg yeah yep. they had a course kind of like similar to what the adam course was okay um but the same thing that the thing about this one was is it was in person okay. so going there each each week on a wednesday for an hour to to learn about anxiety and like just stress Mm-hmm. And how like some stress is good stress. Like when you when you jump out of a plane and do this like skydive, it's the same chemicals getting released when you're like, shit, I got this bill to pay. Yeah. yeah. 
and <laughs> and you start having the panic attack sort of thing. <laughs> it's, it's, crazy. it's the exact yeah. same chemicals in yeah. your body. It's just how your how your mind is framing mm. that particular yeah. stuff uh, that that makes the difference, right? So uh, between going and oh. I should also mention they changed my medication. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So now babe uh, the, the doctors. The, the, okay, like the doctors on not like the therapist recommendation or no, no okay. No. So they 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 when I went to the hospital that time mm. they're like it's clear this one isn't working for okay, you anymore. Yeah. Mm. Um we're going to put you on this one plus this sleep aid which is yeah. called quetiapine. Um it's for schizophrenia and bi- bipolar. So okay. Maybe yeah. I have bipolar. Um Yeah. <laughs> Or schizophrenia, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of them, yeah. But they 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 give it to people who have major depression to yeah. To, yeah. to help them sleep. Yep. Yeah. Um. So so that's basically the cocktail that they gave me, and, and it works. It it it's been doing me me very well. Okay. Good. Um. But I've also like uh, found out at that time too to kind of like backtrack a little bit is that the switch from the clonazepam to the lorazepam, I was going through the withdrawal symptoms. Of mm. the clonazepam, mm, okay. which involved insomnia, <laughs> suicidal thoughts. Oh fuck! Of course. So it was. <laughs> Here's another curveball. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was essentially that. I I feel like that really contributed to mm. to it. It may not have been the entire factor, but yeah. yeah, yeah. But that that's definitely what led me to the to the the final trip to the ER. Yeah. Right. And and but but this time the counselor, the reading, and all that stuff. Mm. Like I just feel like this time I've nailed it. Yeah. Awesome. I feel, I feel like I've finally gotten because when we went to the hospital in December to uh, for my wife to give Kate uh, birth to my boy Tommy. Um, Again, great name. I figured yeah, I'd throw I that. Know. I figured I'd throw that back in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it didn't go nearly as smoothly as anyone thought it would. Right? Okay. Um, essentially, what happened was is. Uh, the night before he was born, we were called in because he was 12 days overdue. Okay. Um, and at that point, they send you to the same office hospital. Which isn't, yeah. like, abnormal for your first one, right? Yeah, like, even my kid was, uh, I think, due date was July 23rd or something, and she wasn't born until August 1st. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we we found out, like, that that's not abnormal at all. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, so we went in for the induction, and they did the whole process or whatever right we walked around for an hour and a very <laughs> yeah. closed saint boniface it's like, hospital. it's like you're telling my story because that's exactly <laughs> i'll go walk around i was like i can't <laughs> let's so, go so so boring just walking yeah. around up and down the hallway yeah, yeah. doing <laughs> so we did that got back on the monitors and stuff like that they held us for actually a little bit longer than they normally would mm. Because they were like, uh, something's a little off on the tracking. Yep. So they just monitor for a little bit longer. And then at like 2.30 in the morning, they're like, go home. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. When do we come back? <laughs> Either she's in contractions or whatever and or yep. or uh, sometime afternoon. So we went home. It was extremely foggy. So that was a fun drive home. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, probably like three hours later, like... Well, with in in the time that we got home, to the time that we drove back, like her contractions like really started to hit. And yeah, it's not like you guys leave, leave live like ten fifteen minutes away. Yeah, from the it, hospital, it was right? it was about half yeah. an hour yeah. or so. Yeah, so um, which I'm sure felt longer. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely on the way back. Yeah. Um. So three hours later, like it was getting pretty bad enough. Like, yeah, she was in a bit of like the contractions were hitting yep. her pretty good right so we went back um and now it was snowing instead of foggy oh lovely <laughs> yeah, great yeah. good and it was sloppy welcome than to manitoba <laughs> yeah <laughs> wait 10 minutes the t- weather will change yeah. um so we got back and um they put her back on the monitors but every time she had a contraction his heart rate would dip yeah like pretty significantly it went like normally they're like 150 bpm or something like that it was dipping into like the 80s or something yeah, okay like that. so they put us in the liber- labor ward and um she had a contraction heart rate almost completely disappeared yeah. um and they were getting ready to like they told us about what a c-section is and all that stuff and uh they're getting her on all fours to to like get the kid off the 
umbilicor or okay. whatever. Yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Many like mi- different positions they put yeah, yeah, you yeah, in when yeah. you're, and and I'm and I can tell like I was panicked. It was scary stuff yeah. because, like I say, every time that she would contract, his heart rate would almost disappear. Yeah. Yeah. It happened twice before they said she's getting a C-section. Yeah. And um, she she told me this last night that she looked at me and uh, I wasn't there. Yeah. Mm. Like, like I, I, she can tell I was like either panicking or yeah. my anxiety was just through the roof oh, yeah. enough. Thankfully, her mom was there with us. Okay. Um, so they're like, okay, well. She can come in with uh with you for the the C section part, right? yeah. And it and she as they transferred her to the gurney to run her down the hall or something like that. And she's signing the papers or whatever. And and what was scaring me the most at that time was that I was seeing someone run with my wife down the hall, mm-hmm. and it was just like that just doesn't sound good to me. Like yeah, that doesn't yeah. look good to me. We got to the recovery ward. And they come in, it's like, so you're not going to be able to go in at all. We didn't even have time to put this, the epidural in. Yeah. It was Ooh, like, yeah. It's like, we had to just knock her straight out. Yeah. So it was it was what they called the crash C-section. Okay. And um, so, like, the whole experience with having, like, the birth of our son, like, she didn't get to hold him for an hour after he was born. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they, they came back, like, 15 minutes after telling us that they no one can go in there. They just came back with my six pound, five ounce kid. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Here you go, dad. <laughs> just like, okay. No, but yeah, like I remember during my, my ch- first uh, kid born, it's like, I, that was the only time where I felt completely 100% useless. Mm. Yep. There's nothing you can do. And then same thing, there's complications. So they will my wife into the operating room and they're like, wait here. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean? Wait here. Yeah. We'll be back in a minute. And I'm literally like, watch. Okay, it's been like two minutes. <laughs> like two and a half minutes. Like what the hell, you know? And like it really wasn't probably even five minutes, but like it felt so much longer. Yeah. And and just they're like, okay, put the scrubs on. And then I, it wasn't a C-section, but like they had to cut my wife quite a bit. Yeah. And but it was just like it was the the, the craziest thing where like you're you're there and just like. What, did, what can I do? It's like nothing. Just yeah. be there and shut up. And like, yeah. I don't. Just I, powerless. I never really dealt with ang- like major anxiety. Yeah. And and but it's just like yeah, it was like, what the fuck? What the, what's going on? Like somebody tell me something. And no one's talking to you. I don't know. Shut the fuck up. And then the wife was yelling at me too. It's like yeah, okay. Like <laughs> I'll take it. At I'll least that's it. familiar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. It's 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 just such a such a weird feeling when you don't know what's going on, and and especially if you have other things going on in your life, like yeah, fuck I yeah can't. yeah. <laughs> but what was good is that um, uh, family was there to at least support mm-hmm. us. Right. Yeah. And, and, and the next day, like they, they, because her oxygen levels were a little funky because of the, the anesthesia, they kept us in like the labor ward overnight. Yeah. So we kind of had our own private room for one night and the dedicated nurse, which that's was good, nice, which was nice. good. Yeah, the, the, the next night we had the semi private room, um, which I didn't know this, like the, the dad doesn't get anywhere to sleep. <laughs> yeah no <laughs> no it's just all about Chair. the mom. yeah well yeah. And, and it should be like I would say in that in that moment yeah. it probably uh, should be I don't know. It'd be nice it'd be nice to have a bed probably but like yeah. also yeah. Uh, she just gave birth yeah yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. when I, I know when uh, when my wife was in labor and then to finally gave her the epidural I went out for a Salisbury steak and then came back and they had like one of those fold out chairs yeah so I folded it out passed out. My wife had to call the nurse to wake me up. <laughs> so I'm cool. I'm like, father of the year, right? husband of the year, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, I didn't end up staying the second night. They told me to go home because, yeah. again, I was still kind of in, like in that panic state, I yeah. think, mm-hmm. or anxiety-driven state. Like it was, it was up there, and yeah. I slept for the night or whatever. Took I had lorazepam at that time, so I took one. Yeah. But like at this point, I wasn't taking them like yeah. every day or every second day. Even I was down to like one a month. Yeah, what, when needed, I guess. Yeah, and, yeah, it no. was absolutely yeah. when needed, and yeah. and that was one of those when needed points. Mm. I haven't had to take anything like that yeah. since, which That's is great. Yeah. Um, and and 
so yeah, now now I have definitely got like to the point where I can recognize when the anxiety is just way too much, mm. and I can work through it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Call someone if I have to. Yeah, and, that's and so great. Out of the two months that we've we've had uh, Thomas with us in in our house, like we haven't we've had to call my mom once. Okay. To to help us overnight. Okay. <laughs> hey man, that's and if she's willing to come help, oh. use it more, man. You, <laughs> use your use your parents, use the grandparents more. Yeah, yeah, Oma and Opa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I I kind of I, I joked about it, but I really meant it at one point because my uh, my in laws, we only have my in laws. My parents are still in Europe, but um, you know when uh, we asked them, and they're like. Yeah, we can come help you. I'm like, hey, you can say no, but like, you did want grandkids, so yeah. <laughs> you know, use it right now. Like, That's you're funny. limited time. You know, yeah, I, yeah. Always, I always joke about that with my father. I'm like, oh, you're getting pretty old, so yeah. like, you know, enjoy the time with the grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's great is that my parents are like literally a stone throw away. Like, oh, nice. That's two, awesome. two minute, yeah. two minute drive and around the block oh, kind yeah. of thing. Perfect. So it was like, I mean, yeah. that could be a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah, but, but if you get along with your parents, <laughs> oh, we. Def- yeah, I def- we definitely we definitely do. So um yeah that, that that was one one emergency call was like this kid will not shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and you'll have plenty of nights like that probably yeah. in days, but I mean that's just being He's been pretty yeah. good though. Like we can't complain at all. He sleeps. Nice man. I mean <laughs> it's awesome. Hey, yeah, it sounds like you have a healthy healthy boy and uh you're doing great. Yeah. I'm so happy that uh you shared your journey through this yeah it, it was definitely a long one <laughs> yeah. it, it, it definitely hit its troubles along yeah. the way but yeah. the one thing i would definitely say to people is like it 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 may feel good for a little while and then feel shitty but fuck it's gonna get good again yeah like yeah. like just and and another thing that i really try to do is just be grateful for what i have yeah like, i have a car i have a house i have a steady job and I have I have a kid food now. Food on like, the table. Food yeah, on exactly, the table. Like yeah. like shit's okay. Yeah. Like, it could be a fuck ton worse. Yeah. 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 I, you know what? I had a, a a coworker that told me he was he was a, a, a meth addict, mm. and he started going to therapy and and rehab and all that. And he says when he sat down with a group of people that went that are going through the same shit, he says, "Holy fuck!" Like. My situation, I thought it was really bad yeah. until I heard the stories from mm. other people. And yeah. I think that that helps too because it either, either helps you like, okay, your your situation is not as bad or it act, at least re- makes you realize that, okay, I'm not the only one yeah. going through this. Right? Not alone in this. Yeah. Like the, yeah. So that, uh, I think group, I've never done group therapy. Me neither. But I think it, I can see how it can be helpful. Yeah. And yeah. I never needed it necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. And then also stumbling upon this show yeah definitely helped to like kind of put that into perspective too is like i'm not the only guy that Mm. that has these thoughts that worries about this crap and like and and yeah so now i just i know ways to break the cycle and know how to like not let my mind run away with with a silly thought well and that's so good like to have control to have to have more control over that because i think so much of like what you talked about in in the beginnings of your journey through this is like you weren't able to do that. You didn't no. have the tools. You didn't have the knowledge. You didn't have the experience or time with it yeah. to get to know it well enough to recognize yeah. it. Yeah. And, and so and, and, and like that's a, such a huge that's such a huge win for you, man. Yeah. That's like, great. I'm in. The, I'm definitely in the wins fun yeah. spot, spot yeah. right now. Yeah, for and, sure. And I hope that that continues. But yeah. I do know, like, there's been days a couple, uh, so far. It's just like I'm it's a shitty day today. Yeah. 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 And and uh, maybe what I, I need what I need to do is just say hey I need to take twenty minutes and go like meditate for yeah, twenty minutes. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, well, I, li- life is up and down always, yeah. right? So I de- I definitely found like in 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 since I started seeing the counselor, I started doing um, especially at work fifteen minute walks. Mm. So instead of instead of sitting at my desk and watching a YouTube video or some some crap like that, yeah, I go outside. I take a fifteen minute walk. Yeah. And what's great about my company or where where I'm located is there's a bunch of tr- like wooded area. Oh, sweet! That's it. great. So nice. So like from time to time, I will go on that walk and I will see like 15 deer. Just, yeah, that's I, awesome. I fucking love nature. Yeah. I love yeah. hunting and yeah. all that stuff. Mm. Like, oh, there you go. Yeah. Just love sitting in nature. Nice. Right? So go for that walk. Come back. Maybe at lunch I'll take a 20 minute meditation or whatever. Meditation really helped me. Yeah. And what's 
what's great now is I don't need to rely on a meditation to get through the day. Mm. So, yeah. well, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you. Uh, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you being willing to come here and share that story. That's not easy. And that's, it. it's so helpful to everybody. And like, you know, like I say it all the time, but like every episode we do, I get something out of it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I want to yeah. thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, no problem. I'm sorry. And uh, congratulations on your baby and your happy life and happy wife, I hope. And uh, hopefully she's happy. <laughs> <laughs> she, I don't know how he's been because she's at home with him right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll let you get home right away. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you know, and, and as much as uh, moms need time alone uh, break from babies so do dads as well yeah. and uh and mm. as long as you guys are doing yeah. that too then great again yeah thank you just whatever i'm not gonna repeat what tim said but appreciate you coming and sharing everything and just to the listeners i hope you guys enjoyed uh listening to this story and hopefully it helps you in any way uh check us out on instagram at quiet right right yeah, yeah, that's what but, I'm not the one. I, who does I'm that. blanking. I'm blanking here. But yeah, Quiet Ride Show on Instagram and shoot us an email. That's how Keith uh, uh, and us met. Really, he so- sent us an email with his story, and then now he's on the show. So uh, our email address is the Quiet Quiet Ride Show at gmail dot com. So shoot us an email, and uh, maybe you'll be on the show as well. So uh, Keith, before you leave. Uh, every guest, you, oh. guest uh, you get a quiet riot mug from us as well. Sweet. Enjoy your coffees or if you whatever want to throw you want to put it in, in there, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, enjoy it and thank you again for uh, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, cheers. cheers. All Quiet Riot Show episodes have been recorded and produced by Suver Media. If you think you have an idea for a podcast but don't have the space or proper equipment, please visit suvermedia.com for more information. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please hit the follow button and leave us a review if the platform you are listening on allows you to do so. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Quiet Riot Show, and follow us on the Instagram page, at Quiet Riot Show. Please share this episode with others that may be interested in these topics. If you know anyone that would enjoy these topics, feel free to share our podcast with them. Also, let us know what topics you'd like to see covered in future episodes. Get in touch with us in the comments on our channel and social media, or send us an email to quietrideshow at gmail.com.